Hello and welcome to the AI Impact Customer Showcase. My name is Kevin Peron. I'm joined by Marcin from Spirosoft. Yes, Marcin, would you please introduce yourself? Yeah, hi guys. I'm Martin Ziga. I'm a CTO from Spirosoft's group. Before we begin, can you please share a little bit about uh, Spirosoft? What are the, uh, about the business and some of the key problems that you're solving for customers? Right, so basically we are a um, software house company. So we are creating the bespoke tailor-made software for our clients, for our customers. And we specialize in multiple uh, different areas. To name just a few, uh, it can be HR, uh, it can be geospatial, automotive, uh, or like uh, finance. So we are over um, 1,600 of employees, and most of them are engineers, and we are rapidly growing. And so uh, we were introduced by the Financial Times as one of the uh, fastest growing companies year to year, from starting from 2022 to 2024. What was the main motivation, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, key starting point for you to kick off your AI POC or solution? Well, the motivation is kind of quite obvious. It's reducing costs, so like saving money. Um, the problem maybe with this approach is how we can cut the cost while maintaining the uh, business needs and uh, also like simultaneously improving the quality of the solution. So this is where the problem lies. So cutting costs was a, was a key strategy in mind to help kick this off. Um, what was the what were the key um, problems uh, statements or the key use cases that you you chose to start? Right. So internally, as we are a group of the companies and our structure is quite complicated, we are in need of creating our own uh, ERP system. Um, there are like a lot of business processes, and we are very flexible when it comes down to how the different companies in the groups are structuring their business. Uh, so this it's often very hard for us to find a common denominator uh, to encapsulate all the business needs. And because of that, we needed to create an ERP system to support all the business processes, to integrate all the data into the like one source of truth. Um, the challenge was that because of our complicated structure, because of different needs, because of not being able to find this common denominator, we've created a lot of costs internally for creating the, the and developing the, the, the solution. Uh, and thus, trying to save costs there was the main drive for us to look into the AI solutions and how we can use them uh, to, you know, to, to create an environment where we can deliver the, the business needs to create the functionality faster and with better quality. So it sounds like uh, uh, reducing costs was, was a big motivation there, and you chose ERP. So can you can you walk us through what was the before and after, and uh, how you were using uh, Google Cloud AI to help solve this problem? Yeah, so um, basically uh, before it was like over 22 persons on the team that was constantly developing the new features for the application, uh, catering for the business needs. Nowadays we were able uh, by implementing um, Google Code Assist, AI Code Assist, um, while also teaching this Code Assist to work on our own frameworks, our proprietary code base and code source, uh, to reduce this, this number from 22 to 10 persons. Also, this is like a huge gain for us, but also we were able to shrink the um, onboarding time, as it, it is kind of a bit complicated, uh, to be a new team member in this uh, project because of the you know the vastness of business cases and everything that you need to understand but by creating the documentation via using the AI we were able to reduce the onboarding time from the for the new um, team members for the new joiners basically from um, I think it was previously two to three months now it's three weeks in three weeks time so less than a month we were able to you know introduce a new member into the existing code base and get a value out of his or her work. Amazing. So on this, on this, uh, on, on the onboarding use case, uh, can you describe? Uh, can you describe like what was the what were the inputs that you had to to train and what kind of products you're using to help solve this problem? 
Yeah, mainly it was uh, Vertex AI and um, teaching their, um, the models basically on our own code basis. And this is the case that I think uh, we went jointly with Google. So Google is an amazing partner. Uh, we were able to utilize and use the, basically to pick the brains from the Google engineers, show them our code base and ask them questions. Okay, guys, here it is. What do you think we will be able to do with it? So I do think that this is like a joint venture when it comes down to this business case, us and Google, uh, to populate, create and teach those models and then to run our own internal experiments, just kind of validating what were our hypothetical gains here and there. And most of them, if not all, came to fruition. And because of that, we are very happy with the outcome. Amazing. So we're talking about uh, how to increase the efficiency of, of the team in, in, a, in a developing code with the ERP system, with Gemini Code Assist, and accelerating the onboarding time uh, with, a, with a Vertex AI. Um, can you describe like what were, what, were the, what were the key motivators or the key decision um, criteria that you made when choosing those two things? There are so many different things you can choose from. Why Gemini Code Assist and why Vertex AI? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, it just works like kind of the problem was that uh, we were thinking that this AI solutions is more like off the shelf ones. So you just install it and instantly you get the benefits. It is not working like that. So you need a strong partner to be able to understand the capabilities of what you are able to achieve. So by doing experiments on our own, we just kind of fell short of the capabilities of those AI models and it was not showing the improvement rate that we were like thinking should be validating the business case for us. But by engaging with Google engineers, by, by engaging with Google and like showing them what the problems that we are having internally are, uh, we were able to overcome that. And I think by doing that, we became as a Spirosoft better company to drive the AI transformation also for our clients. So this would be the added benefit of us doing something for us internally. But then because of that, because of the experience that we were able to get from Google and uh, by our own volition, then we were able to even better care for our clients nowadays. Amazing. Uh, while, while you were in the, um, in the process of uh, advocating why using AI was so important, what were some of the uh, challenges that you, you faced like, during this um, adoption phase? Uh, like amongst like, peers or amongst decision makers, thinking about the right kind of like, uh, technology to use, what were some of the, the, the key challenges that you faced and, 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 and how did you solve them? Well, again, uh, I'm a CTO, right? But I tend to be more skeptical uh, when it comes down to the AI and how we can use it in the, um, helping our business. So maybe I was the problem, to be perfectly honest, because I was at the very beginning, I was like finding why it would not work. And then we've just engaged again with the partner. So I, I think I strongly emphasize to have somebody uh, to go along with you on this journey. And then by learning and showing where exactly we can have it, then we just implement our own experiments, run it on our own, and this just validated the hypothesis that were jointly crafted together with the Google. And then it was very easy to sway me and then the rest of the board to, you know, to invest into this such solution. So it's like the number speaks for the same, so to say. Amazing. So um, it seems like the actual resistance may have come from, from, from you in some, in some cases. So um, meeting that resistance is bringing on other experts that have a different point of view, whether they may be within the company or outside the company. Uh, a, a really amazing story. Um, leveraging everything that you've learned so far today, what would you advise to another CTO or another C-suite uh, decision maker that's thinking about kicking off their, their uh, POC or their AI journey? What are some of the key uh, best practices that you would, you would recommend? Yeah, so again, I think that finding good partner, good technological partner that is capable of understanding your business and your business needs is better than trying to do it alone. Like probably you'll fall short of like designing the POC, what you have in mind, but not necessarily what there is on the market or what the technology is allowing you to do. And because of that, those most of those POCs that I've encountered, I kind of designed to fail from the very beginning 
and by introducing the like external point of view, either from the technology side, but also from the business side, I can it can only can improve uh, your approach to the to the AI, and then maybe you should design your experiment, design your proof of concepts in this fashion that it should yield a tangible benefit. If the board members, like stakeholders, anyone see tangible benefits out of your proof of concept, it's just a matter of case of investing into the full-fledged solution then. Amazing, so prioritizing use cases that can show like real ROI, involving the right kind of experts both within and outside the company to help uh, address any challenges of, of, of our resistance. Uh, amazing, amazing. Marcin, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.